Councilor Connors is running late. Okay. Councilor Farrell. Here. Councilor Damalak. Has to be excused. Mm -hmm. President Panko. Here. Councilor Luger. Here. Councilor Golden. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Young is asked to be excused this evening. Mm -hmm. Councilor Whitney. Here, sir. Councilor Soltizia. Here. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, do I hear an approval for the minutes of October 23rd? So moved. Okay. Are there any questions or comments on those minutes? All those in favor? Uh, do I hear a second? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Vice President Bunker, approval of payrolls and invoices. Thank you, Madam President. I move to approve payrolls dated October 26th and November 9th in the amount of $165,680.42 and invoices totaling $376,391.74. Do I hear a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. And now we have time on our agenda for public comment. Um, so if you uh, would like to stand and speak and either ask a question or make a comment, please state your name and your um, address. And um, I am aware that Marquita Roberts is here, so would you give us your presentation during this period of time? Not really presentation, but you know. Okay, so uh, back in October, we submitted a request to the borough for uh, $700 uh, to go towards t-shirt purchase for the um, students of Jenkintown for MLK Day of Service. Uh, we hosted this event back in 2016. 2015, it was very successful. We had a total of 54 students and uh, about 30 parent volunteers. This year, we've already uh, doubled our numbers, and so we're anticipating somewhat uh, above 100 students to participate. Uh, we've linked up with Lowe's and Fishes and Immaculate Conception, and so it now it's going to be a community event and not just a uh, Jenkintown School District event. And Lowe's and Fishes serves about 100 families a week um, through their pantry. And so we're looking to feed uh, about 60 to 80 families um, at Immaculate Conception on MLK Day of Service. Uh, the request for funding is so that we could have a unified front and the children would wear these t-shirts um, that day that would be uh, given to them. We've also reached out to local businesses to help with the uh, need for food and uh, we will supply each family that participates in the event with a bag of perishable items when they go home. So the idea is that we're going to have a sign-up sheet at Loaves and Fishes. They've agreed to participate in this, and the families will sign up each week up until the, the previous Thursday before the Monday, and we'll have a head count of how many families are going to participate. We're also going to be uh, reaching out to local um, organizations that house uh, mothers and children and also other needy families, um, inviting them to come and also participate. The children are eager to uh, assist these families. I think it's an eye-opener for a lot of them because they think that, you know, we live in this small town and they don't really see the need. Um, and then they volunteer at Loaves and Fishes and they see hundreds of families come through there in, in need of extra food to supply um, food to their families, and so that was my request. Great, thank you very much. Are there any questions for uh, Ms. Roberts? I have one question. Is it sponsored by the school district? It's not. Okay. So it's just the community. Um, initially, last well, when we did it the first year, it was a school event, not really, but the school was um, supporting us, home and school supported us. This year, because Immaculate Conception had been doing something with their families, they wanted to team up with us to make it a you know community event. So it's not just close to the high school students. However, the high school students will be getting community service hours for this. Um, but we will have a lot more families 
involved. I think that was the hardest part. We couldn't open it up to the whole school because we didn't have a lot of volunteers. And this year we seem to have faculty and staff willing to come and support the event on that day. Okay. Thank you. And so the request is being made for um, a financial commitment from council. Um. And you said there are other organizations that are contributing. Do you have a, do you have a sense for the, how much you're getting? So we're not money? necessarily getting money, but more so items to provide the meal. So Wawa has um, agreed to contribute like 200 juices. Whole Foods, we submitted a request. We don't really know. Um, based off of what we received last year, it was more like gift codes, because we do like donations, so we'll do like raffles for the family, maybe like the first family to arrive or something, just to get everybody engaged. Um, the local businesses donated like gift cards, and um, some of them donated food, some of them donated uh, desserts. So it was a lot of different stuff like that, not necessarily um, a financial contribution. Some businesses did, but the largest contribution that we got in 2015 was from Home and School, and that was $100. This year, they are willing to double their contribution, so we're going to get $200 from them. And also, Immaculate Conception, the funds that they would have used for their event, and since we're now partnering up, they're going to give us $200 as well. Um, any other questions or comments? I was hoping yes because we submitted this request back in the beginning of October and in order to order these t-shirts we um, did a poll of three different vendors and actually the vendor that is going to do the t-shirts is local Jenkintown um, resident as well and he is on my back. <laughs> <laughs> Just be a motion, Madam President. Just a motion? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do I hear a motion to support this project? I move that we support this project with $700. Second. You said, yeah, I have some support. I have some support. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? There's a motion on the floor with a second. And Madam President, because it was not on the agenda yet, to see if there's any other public comment on this. Okay. Yes. All right. Is there any other public comment on this matter? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Sounds like you did this vote. So thank you very much for your organization of this event, and we look forward to hearing uh, more. It'd be great. In my opinion, it would be great if it can, um, if the kids, the students, can continue forward with it and keep their support going. It is our goal to do it annually. The only reason that it lasts last year was because, again, we didn't have the parent support. So there were eager students, they were coming to me, and yeah. it just, you know, we had to have everybody involved in order to make the <coughs> event success. That's great. Yeah. <coughs> Let us know how we can help publicize or support. Okay. And we can volunteer the, uh, the mayor showing up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So put last year, yeah, the last year was, uh, the, when we did it in 2015, it was on the borough website and it did make it to the town square. We mm -hmm. just missed the meeting in order to request funding. So this year I was like trying to be on top of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my only thing is that do you guys mind us putting the logo of the borough on the flyer? We do that for every business that participates as far as like donations. Mm -hmm. I don't have an objection to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, let's, maybe fun. you can talk with George about that. Here. Okay. Can you, and you just make sure we get to all the dates and the times, because that's something we like to be able to volunteer. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Now we have time for any additional public comment. Yes, would you say your name and res and your address? Uh, Jack and Balcher, 315 Cotman Street. Uh, basically, our, I've been the Request a delegate from Cotman Street to come speak to council about the parking issues going on on Cotman Street. We have resident permit parking on one side of the street. We are, for those that don't know, we are two blocks long. We are well over the number of parking spots that we have with the residents alone. Uh, and our issue is, is that it's not being enforced. Um, the signs are 15 feet off the ground. Nobody can see them. They're mounted very improperly. 
and nobody pays attention to them. So we've had to go out and kind of uh, self-enforce resident permit parking. Um, we do live between two bars that are very busy. Uh, the only enforcement we get is daytime. So when everybody's at work, then it's not really an issue. However, at nighttime, when the bars are full, the restaurants are full, which is wonderful for the businesses, we have nowhere to park, and we do have to pay every year for a permit. Mm -hmm. um, so we would like the signs adjusted properly, and we would like to see some enforcement on this, as well as there are meters on top of the street. Um, <coughs> we would like to know if they can be removed. Mm -hmm. They honestly cannot be making more than $10 a month. Okay. All right. So tip, thank you for your comments. And typically, that kind of a problem might be taken to the public works meeting. Um, but Chief, would you we'll, want to comment? We'll, we'll, uh, mm -hmm. we'll monitor. Okay. So it's just been it's just been yeah. an ongoing issue that we have. Yeah. Been thank you for bringing it back to our attention. Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll check if the signs are standard if they're mm -hmm. in compliance. Right. All right. Any other public comment or questions? Actually, I have a question. Yes. <coughs> Would you state your name and address? Christine Glass, we're of Green Army. Um, I'm actually here to find out an update on the business activity at 301 fund. I put a complaint in uh, September 20th of this year. I just trying to find out what's going on. I don't heard okay. <coughs> Thank you. And um, can you? Sure. I'll, I'll be happy to. Uh, so, Ms. Glass, uh, Mr. Mr. Locke received your complaint. Uh, our office has reviewed it. Uh, we have been um, trying to schedule a meeting with the Downs, and uh, several of those meetings have been canceled, some by the borough, some uh, scheduling difficulties, uh, but I, it will be happening soon. I have no other further update for you. Uh, but at that meeting, we intend to um, raise uh, some of the documentation uh, that was presented to Mr. Locke. Now, we're over two months now. Business. We you. definitely uh, understand that. And like I said, I, I don't want to blame the downs. Some of the rescheduling has been on the borough's part. Mm -hmm. And we will get together a meeting soon. Okay, thank you. Any other? Um, yes, sir. State yes. your name and address. Yes, for David Alexander, I, uh, I'm a <coughs> resident of 417 Vernon Road. Um, and eat, eat. feel free to stop off and eat to visit our, our uh, holiday blights. I have loved living in. Jenkintown for uh, approximately 10 years. It's a wonderful community of about, I believe, a four, of about 4,000 e e residents. I've just been I met with a lot of joy and happiness here. Well, usually here, all right. And um, um, as a result of our recent <coughs> election, I made it a, a point that is the mayoralty. Uh, I made it a the point of just walking around and asking people what was going on and why there appeared to be this high level of enmity, you know, which in an in an iconic in, in, the, in the place like uh, Jenkintown, I was a bit shocked. You know, I said, "Well, how can this be? I mean, it is uh, it uh, it is the." Independent nation of uh, Jenkintown. So, uh, uh, at any rate, uh, a, a number of interesting observations, and I e, e come here spontaneously. N no one has asked me to speak, and I'm speaking out of the heart. Right. One observation, which I was a little bit amazed at, was that. And a lot of the residents who I spoke to, in a random way, wanted more of your uh, interaction with them. All right. 
walking egg, egg round, knocking on doors, learning exactly what is going on, walking in, uh, in with a mud, with, in the mud, so to speak. So uh, I needn't eat, eat the labor of that. Uh, if the mother had a the phrase, if the shoe it fits, it, 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 it put it on, you know, so you can uh, eat and behave accordingly. Item two was the obvious issue, which, which I just heard about uh, previously, with this, with the issues around a, a with the, the, the mayoralty election and whatever was going on, because I he, he, he cannot really understand it, because it seems beyond my ability and capacity to uh, aid appreciate all to a, a appreciate all of the issues. As one interested in the party, I would just ask you to try to resolve this and end with this schism and, and to bring us in the back together as one community. And, and, I, and, and I will just end with, it's, it's, in, it's in all of our interests. I am not... Uh, Stating who is right or wrong, but it's in everybody's interest for to have this resolved because we're all good people. So I uh, thank you uh, in a allowing with this old man to uh, speak up. But it's a wonderful borough, and and we love e e living here, and uh, and uh, we also love the, the the people who are in it, and. And all means all. Peace. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Appreciate your, your sentiment. Any other comments or questions? All right. Moving <coughs> on, we'll move on to um, our presentations that are scheduled. Chief, would you like to be first? Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the board, the mayor. You want us to it's coming up. It's coming up now. Okay. I, I want to just talk very briefly about uh, emergency management real quick. And just to show the board that uh, we do have an emergency management plan. And I'm not going to keep anybody here later than 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have an emergency on your hand. <laughs> yeah. Can you flip up a little bit? Yeah, this is just an overview of Jake Tumper's emergency management plan. <coughs> what is emergency management? The function for government specifically responsible for coordinating the community response to a major emergency. Again, what is emergency management? It's not a substitute for an addition to police, fire, rescue, or public works, or any other response units, but a system of coordinating. In 1978, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Act, Management Act became law. Every municipality had to have an emergency management plan, um, an emergency management coordinator, and have some kind of a functioning, what if this happens, what do we do? So it's, it's mandatory that we have to have that. This is the um, emergency management I'm going to go in reverse. We would start at the lowest level. If an emergency happens in Jacobtown Borough, we would move to the county for assistance, then the state for assistance, and if needed, to the federal government for assistance. And by and on a reverse, we, orders come from the other way, from the top down as well. There's four phases of emergency management, mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Lucky for Jacobtown Borough, um, board members, mayor, residents, luckily fortunate for us, we have a fire department, uh, medical service, and emergency service teams that react quickly, respond quickly, and they're the boots on the ground for an emergency and they know what they're doing. They're, they're the when something bad happens, they know what they're doing. So we're very fortunate to have 
uh, fire departments that are well trained, and EMS sentinel armors that, that is well trained, police department that's well trained to respond to any emergency that Jacob Town can face. Our emergency management um, organizational chart is um, Mayor, Jacob Town Borough Council, Emergency Management Coordinator, which is me, Deputy <coughs> Coordinators, Emergency Management, Staff Functions, and Supporting Organizations. And I must say that everybody um, in the administration office is involved with emergency management. The manager, the financial financial director, um, Shelby as an information. So everybody, even the elected officials, everybody in the borough is involved with emergency management in some in some form. <coughs> this is the police department's organizational flow chart. Of course, it's mayor, then the chief, then the lieutenant and sergeants and squad members and their duties. So, um, go ahead, go back. This is, uh, I'm the emergency manager coordinator, deputy coordinator is, is Lieutenant Tucker, Sergeant Sapizio, and I've added Fire Marshal Kevin Lynch to our, to our uh, team. And staff, like I said, is George Locke, Rick Ware, Shelby Smith. Why I have a plan is very obvious, is to coordinate agency response, quickly determine magnitude, keep the public informed, rapid restoration of services, continuity of government, maintain hazard analysis, and eligibility, uh, eligibility for uh, financial recovery. Coordinating agencies, police, fire, EMS, public works, administration, schools, hospitals, American Red Cross and the private sector, everybody in an emergency is involved with the emergency in some fashion. Regional coordination, this is very important. Jacob Town is a member of the uh, Montgomery County Regional Emergency Management Team. So when there's an emergency in the borough, whether large or small, we're never by ourselves. The support services around us, every community that's that, that we're that's a member of the of the, of the team, comes to our assistance. So, whether the emergency is large, whether it's isolated to just take <coughs> account, no matter what it is, takes a phone call for uh, help to arrive to assist us in any way. And a good example of this is um, when the floods in Abington. Um, flooded uh, the Roslyn area back in 96. It's a really good uh, example of emergency management and uh, mutual aid because every member of the fire departments, all five fire departments, every available officer, police officer, EMS people, public works people in the township were involved with the flood itself and um, with evacuations and doing what they needed to do that to take care of the flooding itself. Supporting agencies like Jacob Town, we uh, took care of the normal everyday police services. For example, we answer calls for the township for calls for service. So that the emergency people were dealing with the emergency, the township was still being covered with responding uh, with Jacob Town, Cheltenham, and other departments assisting with answering calls for service in the township, and that was um, we sent we sent four four cars and four officers there to take shifts, along with Upper Moreland, Cheltenham, and the rest of, rest of the uh, emergency management group. So that's a good example of when somebody needs help, everybody is there. If Jacob County needed that help, they would do the same for us. Plan organization is basic plan narrative and concept of operation. We have the county's basic operating plan, which most municipalities have. Go ahead, Rick. This is a hazard analysis. Um, we do have a high rise in the borough. We do have a railroad. Um, we've had helicopter landings and of course fire and um, 
power plants, his beloved power plant. But there are the <coughs> things that could happen. Mobilization always starts with 911, calling 911. If you think there's a problem, don't hesitate to call 911. <coughs> this is a Unified Command. Uh, most of the incidents that we have here in Jake Town is a Unified Command because it's more than one person in charge. For instance, the guy that was last year that was running around in the sewers, I don't know if you guys heard about it, he was running around, he, he committed a burglary, he in the township, got into the sewer system, was running around in the, in the sewers, in the, in the borough. So Cheltenham, that was Cheltenham's incident. The command post was set up at the train station, but it was a, a, it was a unified command because I was also, also there uh, between Cheltenham and Jacob Town. Thankfully, some guy walking the door, this man pops up out of a manhole cover. <laughs> <laughs> and he called us right away. But it's just a, another example of, of a unified effort. Okay. This is a typical emergency operations center. Our emergency operations center is here in this room. It's not as fancy as that. It's also extended to the police desk. Um, and our emergency operations center is very basic. The way we have it set up is um, all emergency calls from residents, if the residents have an emergency, a 911 emergency, fire, medical, police, that goes to 911 automatically. You call them, they're directed <coughs> to call 911. We blast that out all the time. Because in, in an emergency, I'm, I think it's another slide I'm going to talk about, but they want to reduce all the calls to 911 to the county. So, normally we would handle the non-emergency calls from this room or the police desk if somebody calls in and just wants to report something. We would take that call here and give it to the highway department, or we would call the fire department. But if they have an emergency, a fire or a wire down or trees down, they're dispatched through the county radio system. We don't want to interrupt any emergency uh, calls at the fire department yet. Most of our, most of our, most of the time when we open the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, is weather related in this, in this area. Most of our calls and problems are weather related <coughs> in our area. If, God forbid, if there's a catastrophe, a major disaster, a major building collapse, whatever. We wouldn't handle that in this room, or Cheltenham wouldn't handle that out of Cheltenham's room, or Abington wouldn't handle it out of Abington's room. That would be handled through the county's emergency operations center. We would work directly out of that unit, because it would be a, a wide-scale, multi-jurisdictional multi problem not just isolated to Jacobson. Oh, go back to that warning, please. This is very important. Public warning, emergency alert system. <coughs> in any emergency in the borough, it's really very, very important to get information out to the public as quickly as possible and give the borough, as, give the residents as much information <coughs> as we can give them. Very quickly. And there's a number of ways we do that. We can do that through our website, through um, the Monco Ready Alert System. Um, so we try to get the info out quickly. And that's where the information officer comes in to play. That's where the manager comes in to play. That's where the mayor comes in to play. When we need messages out quickly, it needs to go out quickly and without delay. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. There's also a, a, a service where you would sign up on your cell phone right and get text messages. You know what? I'm going to talk about that right now. Sorry, step in here. Because, you know, that's right, because um, people who sign up for the ready alert, if I send out a ready alert from this building, only the people who signed up for the ready alert get that message. And only the people who sign up to the borough website for get, to get information. Mm -hmm. Only those people will get that message. So, in a real serious emergency, 
we would ask the county to use what they call iPaws. And iPaws is an integrated public alert warning system. They could, the county will, if you can tap your, pin your phones, your landline, your cell phones, and everyone in the, in the area of the emergency will get an emergency alert. If we say we want an iPaws message sent out, they'll, even if you didn't sign up for anything, you would get that message on your phone. And they have the technology to do that. So in a really serious emergency, that's the route we would go for less my, for minor things or for, you know, if there's um, a less serious emergency in the bar, we would use our own local, our own local uh, notification system. So we encourage <coughs> that if you didn't sign up for the borough website with a Monco Ready Alert, please do. That's on our last slide. We recommend that so you do uh, get the messages and, and are informed with uh, when something bad happens. David. Chief, yes, sir. Can I just interrupt for a second? Um, I just wanted to give the context that I had asked um, the chief to give a, a brief presentation because we do have a lot of new members of council. And it just seemed like a really, it would be important for people to know, you know, sort of what our role is relative to um, if there is an emergency. Um, that said, <laughs> uh, do you think about two more minutes would do it? I want to flip through these real quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> this is just areas of responsibility, and the police know what their responsibility is, and the fire department knows what their responsibility is. Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> Here's a response. Go ahead, Go ahead <laughs> This is the hazmat unit that the county has. So if there's a hazmat situation in the borough, we get a response from the county. Go ahead, <clears throat> Support personnel from the medical uh, second alarmers, public works, school district, code enforcement. One second on code enforcement. I hear a lot of people complain about, oh my God, I have to have another inspection. They inspect me too much. Inspections are very important. And in emergency management, it's really important to have building inspections because the fire in uh, Westchester, the nursing home, mm -hmm. is a prime example of poor, no, basically no inspections. So, um, don't complain if you have to have a house inspection or somebody come down and look at your roof. <coughs> this is a prevent a disaster and a prevent a problem down the road. Evacuation or shelter in place, we would notify the residents, whatever the case may be. If we have to evacuate or shelter in place. <coughs> evacuation would only come into play if something really bad happened at Standard Presteel, for instance. And there's an airborne chemical that we would have to uh, find out what's being leaked or can they shelter in place. We would, and that's where the I-pause notification would come into play. Go ahead. Man. Public information, again, getting messages out to the residents is, is, is extremely important to do it quickly. Recovery and record keeping is, is mostly what the emer uh, emergency management coordinator does. Because I don't drive fire trucks, I don't drive police cars, I don't drive plow trucks, but whatever they need, we would make sure they have. If we need five backhoes, we would get five backhoes. If we need a septa bus, we would get a septa bus. If the fire chief says, I need 20 chainsaws, we would get the 20, 20 chainsaws. Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> These are supporting organizations, American Red Cross, hospitals. We keep our, our, our contact listings up to date. We're in the Eastern Monto group. <coughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, snow emergencies. This is basically when we open up our VOC. This is mostly weather related when we use this room or the police staff. The mayor normally calls for a snow emergency. In the absence of the mayor, the highest ranking member of our council, 
to call the to sell emergency, and then um, we would have a, a declare a snow emergency that would include where you park your cars, and um, then we operate our EOC from here. We notify the highway department through the EOC, not the 911. If there's an emergency, fire department and EMS is notified by 911, not through here. And we make that very clear when we put the blast out. Before any emergency, before any event, weather event, there's a briefing with the county and all the municipalities involved. We would have a briefing via a phone conference on how, we, how is each municipality, each municipality going to handle this event. And Jacob Town would say, our EOC will be open, we have X amount of public works people, our fire departments are on standby, we have medical people on standby, and then we have periodic briefings during the course of the event. Okay. This is a, a, a emergency management truck from Abington that would, if we need it, we have it. Okay. Example of a serious fire where mm -hmm. things response and command. Okay. Okay. This is, um, these pods are, um, there's four put around the county. Potts Town, Montgomery Township, Abington, and there's one in Cheltenham, I believe. And inside there's just equipment that, uh, for emergencies. This is to detect the case of a building collapse. So, Chief, thank you so much for putting together an amazing collection of slides um, to let us know all about your preparedness. Yeah. These are great. And I just don't want you. I want you to see one more. Sure, sure. Oh, no, the sure. I, 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 I see one sure. in there. It's the there. Bear area. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we have to call the sheriff's office. Um, several times for um, bond protection, and they were very responsive and, and really a big help to us. EOC said we've had helicopter landings here, SWAT teams if we need it, kind of. Now, this is the Eastern Montgomery County Emergency Management Group. All these people, if Jacobtown Borough needed equipment, personnel, whatever it is we need, all these people. And then some would respond here. So, okay, we have one more slide. Keep it. Oh yeah, right there. Right there. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I asked you to sign up for the ready alert in the Jacobtown Borough. Please do that. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll blast that out. Blast that out, yeah. yeah. Can we and save it? this as a PDF and post it on the website, on the police page? Certainly can. That would be great. Oh, I so, but I just want to close real quickly. I just want to assure <coughs> Mayor Foley, I want to assure this board, and I certainly want to ensure, ensure the, the residents that if there's an emergency that happens in Jacobtown proper, it's going to be dealt with efficiently and professionally by all the folks involved, the fire, police, EMS. Uh, the mission will be accomplished. And um, just rest assured that you're Thank in good hands. You. Thank you. We feel that way. Yes. Uh, Chief, is this Chief? This one. Yes, yeah. Have you communicated this yet to the school district? Like, how's that going to work? Like, are you going to meet? Have you already talked to them about reviewing this plan with them? Well, they already have their. Okay. You know, we meet. We have safety meetings once okay. a month. Okay. So because they already. They're familiar with all this. They have. They have. <laughs> they have our plan, okay. and we have their plan. Okay. Um, for a school emergency. Oh, thank you again. I really appreciate your putting that together, and I hope council feels a little more informed about, what, about our preparedness. All right. Um, moving on, we're, we're going to hear a brief report of, from our engineer, Pannoni engineer, Cal Hassan, um, on the storm water, storm water management plan for Cedar Street. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm going to... It's going to be five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll do my absolute. Best. Okay. <laughs> uh, so thank you.
thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we had submitted a complete investigation report of the existing flooding that currently occurs on uh, Cedar Street, uh, at a low point on Cedar Street. Um, after weeks of uh, investigations, uh, field visits, review of existing documentations that were available at the bar uh, by previous consultants dating back to 2012 uh, and, and on, uh, we had uh, completed our investigation. Uh, just a quick background, uh, currently there is an existing uh, pond in issue that exists on Cedar Avenue. I'll zoom in real quick on this just for you to see. This uh, is the block between Summit and Washington? Mm -hmm. is that, that, yes. that, is, that is correct, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, So this is the, the flooded issue right now, uh, uh, when it occurs at this low point. This low point actually acts as a, a basin. Most of the runoff that comes from a specific drainage area comes via underground piping, and it goes to this system. Uh, it surcharges at this point because there are restrictions after we found that downstream that are preventing the runoff from discharging through the underground piping system and out to the stream in the uh, Sheffernan area. What you see in white uh, is existing stormwater piping uh, that is in place right now. What you see in red uh, is what I'm proposing to do as part of a uh, recommendation uh, to hopefully to, to address the existing flooding <coughs> issue. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the report is very detailed. I'm just going to go through this real quick. Uh, it's almost like an executive summary. Uh, the existing piping, uh, the white pipes, are taken right now a drainage area that is roughly about 18, 19 acres. Uh, our investigation shows that the drainage area is more like 26 acres, not 19 acres. There's an additional seven acres that have not been accounted for that come into this drainage area, uh, and that is one of the causes for the for the uh, for the uh, surcharge and the, uh, the sump here, uh, and what I'm proposing to do is, uh, after looking at the various reports that were submitted, uh, I ran the 10-year storm uh, on the uh, on the reports that were submitted, and ran the 25-year storm. These storms are for different rain events uh, that take place uh, uh, during a specific uh, uh, rainfall. Uh, so, the, again, the, the existing issue is at this point right here, and also we found out that there's more restrictions at this point. Uh, this system right now uh, assumes <coughs> that the existing downstream pipe that is 54 inches in diameter that's taken all the underground flow into the stream. When we did our investigation, we found out there are two restrictions. One was a pipe section of the pipe that was assumed to be 54 inches is only 32 by uh, 30 by 42 inches and then the pipe downstream from it was not a circular pipe 54 inches we found that, that it was 54 inches vertical by 35 inches uh, horizontal uh, that is a, 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 a cause for restriction also uh, we ran different scenarios on existing designs that were, des that were completed for the bar by the previous consultant. <coughs> it did not work. Uh, and then we had to come up with our own version of a solution for the uh, pond issue that exists on Cedar Avenue. Uh, it all starts uh, on, uh, on harbor. Uh, we had to disconnect some of the existing piping that is conveying the runoff down this white pipe. We we're trying to redirect everything back towards uh, Washington, uh, because Washington right now also the, the additional seven acres of additional uh, uh, drainage area that is coming in here happens to be coming from Old York Road and also from Washington from this side. Uh, these pipes will not take that, that runoff into consideration. Uh, as part of our recommendation, we are adding storm piping uh, down Washington. Uh, we are uh, taking some of the, uh, the runoff that is also coming from Old York Road, from up uh, Barrow Hall. Uh, we're going to convey it down and separate it from the existing white system that goes down to Cedar. Uh, what this will do is it will alleviate the 
storm runoff that is coming across Cedar Avenue down to uh, Walmart. Uh, we're going to take it around Washington uh, with uh, various size piping. Uh, some are 36 inches, others are 42 inches. And then we're going to come back down from Walnut Street, connect into this section. Now, the section that I mentioned before was 30 by 42. Uh, we are proposing to remove that section, replace it with a 54 inch to max the downstream pipe so that all this runoff can be conveyed properly down the existing uh, 54 inch across uh, uh, Township Line and then into the, uh, the river by, by Shuttenham. Uh, this is in a nutshell. Uh, a summary of what we're trying to do. Uh, we did uh, double and triple check our information and the data that we came up with and then we found it to be uh, it is uh, uh, it, it will work. Uh, the system will safely convey uh, the, uh, the 25 year storm which is the normal storm design for uh, road uh, drainage. Uh, it will safely convey it and hopefully it will, it will alleviate any of the flooding issues that exist on Cedar Avenue. Now, there is additional information that is needed to make sure that the downstream side is fine. Uh, we do not have the uh, luxury of a survey. A survey has to be done so that you know 100% uh, that this is the system all the way into the creek. You want to make sure also there are no restrictions for the 54 inch by the creek. Uh, but considering everything is a plate, everything, everything is fine, uh, the system as we recommend right now, will safely convey the runoff and hopefully alleviate any uh, flooding issue that you have on, on Cedar Avenue or Cedar Street. Uh, uh, we need to also make sure that uh, there are no underground utility restrictions uh, existing <coughs> within Washington uh, that, may, that could make our job uh, difficult to achieve. Uh, but this is the solution. Like I mentioned before, you have a complete detailed report in your packets. Uh, if you have any further questions, I'm you more, I'd be more than happy to answer uh, those questions. Okay. Uh, we have estimated a construction cost of roughly uh, 800 to possibly $900,000 to complete the whole project. Uh, we are also looking into avenues to obtain uh, grants for, for the construction cost. Uh, there is DCED, there are other uh, avenues where we can achieve grants. Uh, maybe not one grant for the whole thing, it may be multiple, but this is what we're going to be working with on, uh, uh, working on with the manager uh, to achieve the grants that, uh, that you need to complete this project. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all that uh, information. Um, and I'm assuming that we, some of those grants take into account that this is a condition that's, um, you know, multi-municipal. You know, this water is not just originating in Jenkintown, but it's coming from uh, you know, above us. That is correct. There is a, at least one portion of the runoff that is coming across Old York Road from Washington that is coming from the uh, Aventon uh, side. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, you are correct. There are, there are other areas where uh, other watersheds are contributing to this. Uh, and the mitigation grant that we're seeking through DCAB uh, serves such purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to, uh, to get the necessary grants to complete the project. Mm -hmm. Not only do we uh, are we seeking the construction grants? We're also seeking grants to cover any possible additional engineering uh, work so that the municipal, so the borough is not uh, incurring all these costs. Thank you very much. Thank and you. so I assume, uh, Manager Locke, that this will be, you know, factored into the planning over the next how many years? <laughs> the next couple. Mm -hmm. and yes, we have been investigating grants to cover the cost of this, Cal just said. Um, and there is a couple avenues that we're looking at that are promising. Okay. Any questions? Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate all your work with this study. It's really fascinating. It's been a persistent um, problem in that area. And we've tried over the years to, to fix it. And we haven't been able to because we really were not aware of the scope of, of what the whole large use was. So, um, a major infrastructure project that we really need to undertake. So, um, you know, thank you for helping us connect all the dots, and, um, and we'll definitely look for the grant opportunities to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have to figure out how to pay for it. Yeah. It's a real problem. Yeah. <coughs> People are mm -hmm. you know, when, when there's a bad storm, the water's three or four feet deep. 
Yeah, we, we, we did visit the site during rain events and we saw for ourselves what is being drained into this area. So uh, I agree, there, there's a lot of runoff that comes from this area uh, that may have been uh, not looked at properly maybe, uh, but uh, there's a lot of runoff that comes in here. It's, it's mind-boggling when you see it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Um, moving on to committee reports, Vice President Bunker, and then finance. Well, thank you, Madam President. This is a report in your packet. Um, nothing especially exciting to highlight other than the seven items that uh, we have on the order of business. Yeah, okay. It's that time of year. Yeah, it's budget so, season. It's budget season. Yeah. So. Um, building and zoning and revitalization, Councilor Carroll. Um, I will record a few highlights. Um, we just prior to this meeting had our um, public review of the 2035 comprehensive plan. Um, that draft was um, uh, put together by um, community members, the Montgomery County Planning Commission, and um, Marley Vice presented um, the draft tonight to the Jamestown Planning Commission. And um, it really is our community's vision and um, it will be our guidance, and it has already served as guidance for council as we um, undertake you know, plans going forward and priorities for the town. So the next steps is that that draft will go out to our um, adjoining municipalities, the Jenkintown School District, and the uh, state and county planning authorities for review for a 45-day uh, open comment period. Additionally, um, that draft has already been put on the uh, borough website and so we encourage the public to take a look at it and there's a feedback option on the website um, so we really want to hear um, the public's feedback on that draft additionally two hard copies will be um, on file on hand rather at the library for review so um that's all with that a couple other things um town square uh holiday festivities the tree lighting is coming up on december 2nd and the menorah lighting on the 13th um, at our BZNR meeting, Manager Lock updated us on four new businesses <coughs> coming into town. So thank you, Manager Lock, for your continued efforts to um, assist uh, new businesses and making Jamie tell their home. And our property maintenance and fire inspection program is moving along steadily as well. And I want to recognize uh, Fire Marshal Lynch for his focused and engaged work to make that happen. So, so All right, any questions or comments? Oh, do we need to make a motion? Oh, to great. That we forward. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Can we do that at this point in time? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to um, move the 2035 comprehensive plan draft forward um, to make it available to the uh, Abington and Cheltenham municipalities, our state and county planning authorities, and Jenkins County School District for review. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? I guess it wasn't on the agenda again yet. Okay. okay. So it was since it was not on our printed <coughs> agenda, we'll open this up for comments from citizens. And I wanted to just acknowledge that I see Laurie Durkin in he, sitting here, and I so want to thank you for your work on the <coughs> Jenkintown 2035 plan. Um, it was real. It's a wonderful plan, and we appreciate the work that you've done um, co-chairing the steering committee. Okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. There's a motion on the floor with a second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to public safety, Council Whitten. Yes, ma'am. We um, we we put a packet and we have one item on the agenda this evening. <coughs> I had some discussion over the last few weeks, months, uh, but I will allow that. To go and actually go to the item. Are we going to answer any questions? Okay. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Um, we'll skip over public works. I do expect Councillor Connors to be here, um, so maybe we'll wait until he arrives. Uh, Jenkintown School District, Councillor McLeod. Uh, we met with uh, Dr. Tadis earlier in the month, and some things that came up. Um, I want to thank Cal and George for helping with the school had an issue about Ballard's on the new ADA ramp. I'm just making sure they were secure. There's issues of insecurity with them and potential student dangerous um, accidents. So we've been, they've been doing a good job of trying to figure out how we can make recommendations for them about how to stabilize that situation. And we did talk a little bit about the bonfire 
she um, was she she expressed her her sensitivity to everyone's concerns regarding the alarm that the bonfire created. Um, she said that she's going to continue to have conversations with the community at large about the placement or the actual existence of the bonfire moving forward, and that will take place in the spring. So that, that conversation will be revisited in the spring. Right now, there's some other issues regarding budget in particular that they want to be responsive to first. And she also said that she will do her best in, in guiding that, leading that charge to make sure that everyone, all the residents concerned are held. So we're aware there's one home that is kind of most closely adjacent to the current location, but there are also other homes that potentially could be affected. So she just wants to have a balanced approach to revisiting where the placement of the should be moving forward and making sure that's a part of the conversation. Um, so we talked about that a bit. And then the other thing that we talked about, um, she gave me a tour of the nest. So we, as taxpayers, we all, many of our children are, are going to be using that library and we all pay for it. So I encourage you guys, everyone in the community, to go and visit the nest. It's the new library at the high school. It's definitely a point of pride for the high school and I think for our community as well. It's very well done. Um, the money, I think, was is, is visibly well spent. And so I think that it's a resource that, that we should all be aware of. So I encourage you guys to check it out. And the last thing we talked about is just continued concerns about how to pose a budget with the state uh, money is kind of in flex and, and uncertain. The idea of how we're going to fund our schools is one that we should all be concerned with. And so she just, she reiterated, we discussed our support as a borough council on trying to find ways of generating new revenue for the school district and being mindful that, that their concerns are ours as well. Mm -hmm. so thank you for holding on to that and keeping our collective concerns up front. Any questions or comments? All right. Um, Jenkintown Community Alliance. I have no report tonight. No report. All right. A multi municipal group, Councillor Golden. Thank you. A couple of quick things. One is there is a DVRPC uh, breaking ground uh, workshop, and they seem to really want to get turnout because they keep sending emails and it's not until March. <laughs> so I expect the next one to say, you know, last chance to register in <laughs> December. The other thing that I think is, is really exciting is that actually uh, Councillor McLeod went to the Building One America conference in Minnesota. Um, in fact, she served on a panel there, and so I think there's a lot of interesting Thank you stuff. For that. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have questions about that, I mean, part of this, the things we were talking about earlier in terms of being an accessible community, being uh, open. Ability to uh, recreate entering suburbs so that they are not tax challenged um, and the tax effort is not <coughs> for the people who live there. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay. Um, I will reiterate the invitation that has been sent to um, Jenkintown Borough Council from the Montgomery County Boroughs Association. There's a holiday party December 14th. Um, and um, we are invited to attend, um, and I believe neither George nor I can attend. So if there is someone on council who would love to step forward, that would be great to have Jacobtown represented. Um, moving on to Public Works Department, uh, Jim Riggins. How are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> Your report is in the packet on Dropbox. A uh, couple things I want to highlight. Over the month of October, <coughs> we did some preparing for the winter. We got all store. We got all the brine tanks up, storage, manufacturing, and the distributing. We changed both tanks. We changed both tanks. Um, motors. We changed both motors for both tanks, so we all ready to go for the winter time. Probably we're still going to all our classes. I think we attended two different classes before the people this month. I think we got about two or three more throughout throughout the rest of the, throughout the rest of the year. And that round us up in the year. I also put a a spreadsheet for the Verizon poll list of the removal of the Verizon polls to keep up so you guys can keep up as well as us. If you got any questions about that, you can give me a call. I'm in constant I'm in constant communication with Verizon. Trying to get going with the uh, restoration of people, but I'm on top of that. Anything else you guys want to ask, I'm open to answer or address. Any questions or comments? The tree looks good. Thank you, sir. It looks good. It's good now. work in progress. Yeah. And I want to thank you for monitoring the removal of the poles. 
Thank you so much. No problem. Um, among other things, I, I, look, I notice in your report there are a lot of really important, um, you know, sort of thorny problems <coughs> that you take care of every day. And, uh, I don't know. If, I'm sure individual people recognize your, and appreciate your work. And thank you on the whole for looking after things. Well, yeah. All right. Um, we already had a report from engineering. Cal, do you have anything more to add? Uh, not uh, pertaining to my report, but if the manager has any updates uh, he would like my input on, uh, I'll be more than happy. Okay. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Solicitor Kilkenny. Yeah, yes, thank you, Madam President. Our office has been working with George just on some advertising requirements, uh, responsible for Rick and Right to Know. Uh, and then we have uh, a matter for executive session, uh, which uh, I believe we've sent the memo on for, mm -hmm. to discuss more in depth with the council. I noticed um, something about uh, the gaming control municipal option. Can you just speak to that briefly? Uh, sure. Uh, our office forwarded to Mr. Locke uh, the uh, uh, related to the, there's a new state law basically saying does the uh, borough want within its premises various small games of chance, uh, electronic games, things like that. They can be played at bars and other establishments. We also have an opportunity to go ahead and opt out of that. Uh, I believe Mr. Locke is scheduling that for the December meeting. The December 11th meeting. Meeting, okay. sorry. Okay, yeah. Yeah. great. A resolution. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, Mayor Foley, do you have anything to report? I do not have a report. Okay. Uh, Chief D. Valentino, thank you again for an excellent report on emergency <coughs> management preparedness. Really appreciate you doing that. Anything to add? Just one thing, Madam President. Mm -hmm. We were scheduled for our assessment for accreditation, November 18th. Unfortunately, there was a, a scheduling problem with the commission and one of the assessors, so it's rescheduled now. And I'll keep you posted when that is. Okay, thank you. All right, Manager Luck, a big report. Good Madam President, I do have a few things I'd like to highlight. There's a written report in your packet. I could answer any questions on that that you might have. Uh, we are into holiday parking season. All meter parking is free on Wednesday after 4 and all weekend. We do that annually. Uh, I attended a DVRPC training session for the TCDI grant, uh, which is opening up next year. It was very informative. Uh, the, the people, we were one of the communities that weren't granted a grant last year, and <coughs> this was a good opportunity to see the grants that were approved and how we can improve our application and hopefully uh, get that money next time. Uh, we did just receive word that we were awarded the multimodal grant that we went in with Abington. We, we went in conjunction with Abington, it's a million dollars. Uh, there's two other grants in that series for the same project, mm -hmm. and that's the intersection of Greenwood and Washington with the flooding and mm -hmm. no sidewalks and traffic lights. And we will miss Lake Washington. <laughs> Lake Washington, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, today as I was going through that intersection, there were um, students from Jenkintown High School, uh, cross country guys, mm -hmm. running standing on the tiniest little piece of concrete, and it just, it really gave my heart. I skipped a beat as I watched them wait for the light to change. It was, it's yeah. so dangerous. There is not room for pedestrians on that corner. Yeah. The 2018 budget is on the order of business for permission to advertise it. Uh, we went through three public budget meetings, as well as several admin and finance committee meetings. Uh, we we're able to reach council's goal of no tax millage increase uh, for the tax levy this year. There is an, a recommended increase in solid waste collection. It's a contract that was awarded uh, after the budget of 17. So uh, the increase was not uh, accounted for in that budget. So we used a fund balance to offset it. It was roughly $40,000 more than what we collected this year. This uh, fee increase will cover it through the 
rest to make it solvent through the rest of the uh, three year period. Okay. And then a casino, uh, that the solicitor mentioned, the casino memo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm available right. for questions. Any questions or comments from the manager's report? Yeah. <coughs> Can you update us on the progress of the effort to get some striping across uh, York Road at the intersection of Summit and York Road where the curb cuts are? Yes, on December 18th at 10.30 a.m., we're meeting with PennDOT out there, uh, Councilor Soltizia, Farrell, <coughs> Panko, and I, I, I'm not sure if uh, Councilor Whitney has signed on to that yet or not. But PennDOT is meeting us down there. I invited the chief to come down. And the purpose of that is just to convince them that we need to have striking done, or? What? Show um, of force? I, I don't know what <laughs> yeah. I, we, we feel it's very dangerous. We feel it would be dangerous to put the striping across, but we need to, I, hopefully our uh, traffic engineer will be The traffic left. engineers too, I'm sorry, yeah. I forgot. That. I think it's more to reevaluate also the curb cuts that they put in, and their reasoning for putting them in. Our, our stance is now that um, it's dangerous to strike that, and the curb cuts go away, because I remember that we were, Excited when the curb cuts were put in, <coughs> thinking we'd have a proper crosswalk there. Well, I, yeah. I, if, if we could get a signalized crosswalk, yeah, I yeah. think we'd all be ecstatic. Right, right. But I think that they told us that no, they just they won't put a crosswalk there. They so won't. They won't stripe it. They won't. They, won't they might stripe it, but no okay. signal. Which yeah. that's the yeah, issue yeah. we think would be dangerous. Is telling people it's okay to cross, but without a light to stop traffic. Yeah. That's what we think. Would and our stance is, is that we're, there's no hope for the signalization, so we're just asking them to, to undo what's been done with the well, I think everything's on the table. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But I think everything's on the table. When we get <coughs> that, it would be, be wonderful if they put up the flashing lights yeah, and yeah. install it. Mm -hmm. They can't leave the curb cuts there without marking the pavement, so they're kind of in flux on that. I think they realized when we started writing letters to them of concern that they, they stopped at that. I noticed they striped the other two further north. So uh, I, I think the uh, the idea is to sit, let them see it first off. And yeah, yeah. Look, because it's very dangerous. It is. And um, if they're not going to put up flashing lights, it's my opinion that council would like to not see it there. I mean, people are using them. There was uh, somebody on council saw somebody come out of the theater, an older couple, and they went to the curb cut because it's there, and they crossed right there. And they were moving really slow. So well, that, that was me. The gentleman was, 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 was using a walker. Yes. yes. It took him about a, two minutes to get across the street. Oh my God. This was 10 o'clock at night. Um, does it make sense for us to um, put barrels in front of those curb cuts so people aren't encouraged to cross <coughs> in the current state? I could put them we there have them to like come up with a solution. Yeah. From a safety standpoint, you can. And we can confirm if you need anything from Penda. Uh, but yeah, it's not a it's not a bad idea since your concern is safety. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be a good idea to block it. I'm sorry. What are you saying? Yeah, no, I just I, we went out there with this exec representative from PennDOT um, asking for some pedestrian crossing signalization, yeah. and they refused to put it there because of its location. And so now they've put curb cuts in, encouraging that. That so I, I really just want to revisit that corner with with mm -hmm. Rand and say what changed over that period of time right. and how do you think this is safe now? Right. There's no way to not to say this is, this is safe. Right. Um, but take it far enough forward to, into a safe... <laughs> they need to come up with a plan to make this safe yeah. for us. And so I think this meeting is really just to present this okay. out there, say what, 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 why, what was your intention putting this here? Mm -hmm. and what's your plan going forward? Because this is not acceptable to us. Okay. Great. Thank you for the update. Great. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Just thank everyone for all your work on the budget. That was no easy task. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, before we move on to the order of business, I'm just going to take a quick look at the um, public works report and see, is there anyone who was attended that meeting who uh, might want to lift up a highlight on that? Madam Lock, is there anything you want to draw attention to? I think we may have, we probably covered most of those things. Yes, we have. Yeah. The only other thing is the dump truck, but that was put under, um, okay. that's on the order of business. Yeah. All right, very good. So uh, moving now to the order of business. Um, Councilor Whitney. 
Yes, adoption of fire department training standards. Motion. I make a motion to adopt training standards set forth in the focus fire services assessment and strategic plan approved by the FIS. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Did you want to make a comment about that relative to your Well, we are, you know, very briefly, basically, we've been working on standards in this uh, strategic plan, more or less, for quite some time, in fact, before I got back on council. And I think this is an important step. We need this. Mm -hmm. um, so I would appreciate everyone's support. All right. All right, there's a motion on the floor with a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. <coughs> um, resolution number two. Oh, Vice President Bunker, it looks like you have the whole rest of the list there. <laughs> no, you got one at the very end. Okay, I got one at the end. You get the close Right ahead. All right, get ready, everybody. This is going to be a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> Make a motion to approve resolution 2017-9 regarding the disposition of records as listed in Exhibit A. You'll remember that we adopted a records retention policy in uh, compliance with state guidelines, and this is just to do the annual purge of right. records. Do I hear a second? second. Okay. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All okay. right. This one's actually interesting. I make a motion to approve resolution 2017-10, supporting the outline of bump stocks. This will make us the first municipality in Pennsylvania to have called upon the state to outline bump stocks in Pennsylvania. Second. Yeah. Any questions or comments? All right. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much, and I thank you for your forward thinking. Thank you. I, I'm really pleased that we have this. We have five more. <laughs> <laughs> and they were the only questions for the end. Yeah, it was absolutely <laughs> uh, I mean, the, a gadget that makes a weapon keep firing as long as you pull on it is supposed to be illegal. And just because it's outside the trigger mechanism instead of inside the trigger, me trigger mechanism is nuts. So, thank you. Uh, this one is the result of an enormous amount of work, and I want to thank uh, Finance Director Ware and Manager Long <coughs> for a stupendous amount of work that's gone into this. I make a motion to advertise the 2017 operating budget. This budget will be available for public review at the Borough Hall during normal business hours. That is a misprint. It should say 2018. Of course it should say 2018. <laughs> but I read it accurately. <laughs> And is the budget, oh, there's a motion on the floor. Do I hear a second? Yes. I second. Right. <coughs> comments. Is the, is the budget also available on our website? It will be now that it's up for advertising. Okay, so it's once we authorize the advertising. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, any other questions or comments? Michael. Michael. That, was, that, was, that was the same question I had. Okay. I would like to add that to the resolution that it will be available for public review at Burrow Hall and also on with our website. All right. Thank you. That's a wonderful improvement. Yeah. And, uh, and once it's adopted, I think we can put it into third. Yes. So that's All right. So just reviewing the motion, um, it's for a uh, motion to advertise the 2018 operating budget, which will then be available for public review at Borough Hall during normal business hours and also on the borough's website. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And no tax um, oh. And if anybody wants me to talk about the trash fee increase, I can explain that if it's worth it. <coughs> um, I make a motion to advertise Ordinance 2017-9, setting the tax levy for 2018. This is just sort of going on with the budget. The budget says how we spend it. This says what the millage is for each account. All right. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. second. Uh, any questions or comments? Yes. Uh, the comment is that... Um, the three in general, those 
and two staff in that great specialist did a great job of being managing the budget and the tax levy so that we do not have a tax increase this year. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Right. Next one. I make a motion to <laughs> contract with eCollect <coughs> Corporation for the collection of delinquent Act 511 taxes. And the word delinquent should be added in there. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Right. Any questions or comments? I hope they're able to get a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, are, they get paid on contingency, yeah, so at least they won't cost us money if they get us right. nothing like the last ones. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Right. I make a motion to set the parking fee at 25 cents per half hour. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, any questions or comments? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Yes. I'll just throw out a comment that <coughs> it's still, we're still cheaper than neighboring municipalities. We are. Um, this one's exciting to me because it's part of keeping the tax system. I make a motion to approve resolution 2017-11 authorizing Jamie Town to enter into a lease purchase agreement with U.S. Bank Corp. Government Leasing and Finance Incorporated. And this is to replace the aging, falling apart dump truck and snowplow. And lease it so we can pay for it over time instead of having to come up with, what would that cost like $60,000 or anything? $85,000. Instead of having to come up with $85,000 all at once, we can just spread it out. Second. Second. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, and before I make the next um, motion, I just want to say that, uh, remind people that a lot of the work the council does to um, get these uh, resolutions and ordinances forward happens in our committee. So it does seem as though we're just rubber stamping things, but we have already like hashed through all of the ins and outs of each um, resolution and motion um, in our committee meetings. So I'm just, you know, as we move forward. Which are also open to the public. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I make a motion to approve the uh, Montgomery, the Ca community planning assistance contract between the borough of Jenkintown and the commissioners of Montgomery County. Do I hear a second? Second. And this is for the Montgomery County Planning Commission work that we ju just witnessed, um, and that work will continue. All right, any questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right. Is there any new business that needs to come forward? All right, we will, um, let's see, we will, we do need to have an executive session to discuss matters of real estate and also um, matters of personnel. Yes. Are we going to take a vote on the request for funding tonight or are we going to take a vote?